Human beings have been making cheese for thousands of years. But how did they first figure out how to turn the milk they were collecting from their domesticated cattle, sheep and goats into cheese? Hey there, cheese historians! I'm Julia, and this is Cheese History, a channel all about the history of cheese. This is going to be the first part of a series looking at the origin and development of cheese to kind of explore how it is we went from just producing milk to producing the full range and variety of cheeses that we have available to us today. Let's get into it. There's a reasonably common story about the origins of cheese. It's the story of a nomad in the ancient world who needs to go on a long journey. Now, one of the things he takes with him on this journey is an animal stomach filled with milk. And he ties this to the back of his donkey, his camel, or whichever animal he happens to be using um, as his beast of burden as he goes on this journey. And of course, the, the animal stomach full of milk sort of bounces around as it goes along. And after a few hours of travel under the hot, hot ancient Near Eastern sun, the nomad stops for a rest and decides he's going to uh, consume some of the milk that he brought with him. So he unties the animal's stomach and goes to drink the milk, only to discover that the heat from the sun, the jostling on the camel, and the enzymes from the animal's stomach itself have resulted in the liquid milk turning into a solid. Now, being the adventurous nomad that he is, he decides it's worth trying this new stuff to see if it's actually edible. Upon tasting it, he discovers mm, it's actually pretty good. And he has, in fact, been the first person in the world to discover cheese. Compelling though the story may seem, it's not actually very likely to be true. For one, early humans were by default lactose intolerant, which means that there's really no reason why the nomad would be carrying a stomach full of milk with him on his journey, because if he drank it, he would have all those wonderful side effects. Diarrhea, bloating, flatulence, wonderful things to experience. Uh, so unless he's taking his infant child with him and he's taking the milk specifically to feed uh, that child, it's, there's really no reason why he would be taking it with him. There's no mention of child in the story. The other reason is that in this story, the milk is being turned into cheese by an enzyme in the animal's stomach called rennet. Now, rennet is one way of turning milk into cheese, but it's not the simplest and most basic method. So it's really unlikely that this was the first way human beings figured out how to make cheese from milk. Let's talk cheese making for a second. In order to turn milk into cheese, it has to be coagulated. Coagulation is the process of turning a liquid into a solid. Now, when this happens to milk, it results in a solid that we call curds, which is then processed into the cheese, and a liquid byproduct called whey. There are two main ways that you can turn milk into some form of cheese. The first is basically to just to leave the milk in a warm place after it's been extracted from the cow, sheep, goat, whatever animal you're making your cheese from, because the milk already has bacteria in it, and that bacteria is going to consume the lactose, or the sugar in the milk, and turn it into lactic acid. That process will make the milk more acidic and cause the solids to coagulate out from the liquid, so you'll end up with curds and whey. This process sort of starts to happen naturally almost the moment an animal is milked, particularly in like a warm climate, such as in the ancient Near East. Now the second way to turn milk into cheese is through the use of the enzyme that I mentioned in the myth, uh, rennet. Rennet is an enzyme that's found in the fourth stomach of ruminant animals, such as um, cows, sheep and goats, but it's only found in very young animals, because only they are consuming milk. So calves, kids, and lambs tend to produce rennets so that they can absorb the nutrients from the milk that their mothers provide for them. Rennet causes the milk to transform from a liquid into a solid, um, thus making it possible for the young animal to actually digest that milk and extract the nutrients that it needs from it. Without the rennet, it's not possible for that young animal to digest the milk. 
by adding rennet to milk, you speed up that coagulation process that occurs naturally with the bacteria, which opens the possibility for a whole range of different types of cheeses. We have evidence that human beings first domesticated goats and sheep around 8,500 BC in what is today Iran, and cattle a bit later around 7,000 BC in modern-day Turkey. Now these first domesticated animals would have been primarily kept for meat. It's not until a bit later, around 6,500 BC, that we start to see evidence that human beings were collecting and storing milk in clay pots. This is quite important for turning milk into cheese because if the milk is sitting in a clay pot for any length of time, there, there's an opportunity for that bacteria to really start to um, consume the lactose and acidify the milk, thus coagulating it out into a very basic cheese. It's not entirely clear why human beings would have started collecting milk from their animals in the first place. Like all mammals, human beings lose the ability to naturally process lactose once they're weaned from their mother. So human beings don't innately have that capacity to be able to consume the milk of other animals. The adults in these ancient human groups would have been lactose intolerant, like much of the world is today. It's possible that these early humans were collecting milk to feed to their infants, perhaps to supplement the milk they would have got from their mothers, or to replace it if their mother happened to have died. One of the problems with this is that in order to feed a human baby milk from a cow, sheep or goat, you have to get it from the animal to the infant quite quickly to stop any potential harmful bacteria growing too prolifically in the milk and causing real issues for the infant. So it's kind of debated as to whether humans were collecting milk to feed to their infants or not. If people are storing milk in clay pots of some kind, from around about 6,500 BC, it's likely that soon after that they did in fact discover the first types of cheese. Because by leaving that clay pot full of milk in a warm environment long enough, you will end up with a very basic cheese. The bacteria that's already naturally present in the milk will start consuming the lactose in the warm environment, thus making the milk more acidic and causing it to coagulate, to separate out into curds and whey. What we next start seeing in the archaeological record are uh, ceramic sieves with, with drainage holes in them and woven baskets that could well have been used for straining out the solids from that coagulated milk so that you've got a separation between the curds and the whey. It's also possible that early humans figured out how to coagulate milk by using rennet, using the enzymes from the stomach of a young animal. Perhaps they could have figured this out when they slaughtered a very young animal and, upon examining its stomach contents, discovered that the milk it had recently consumed had turned into a solid, thus suggesting that by adding parts of this stomach to the milk you could produce the similar result. This would lead to yet another way of being able to preserve and extract the nutrients from milk. The evidence that we have for the use of rennet in cheese making does come quite a bit later in the archaeological record, but it's still entirely possible that, that the use of rennet actually predates this evidence. Now in the hot environment of the Fertile Crescent, even these initial cheeses would have gone off quite quickly, so they would have had to figure out ways potentially to preserve the cheese, either by uh, salting it, or sealing it in some kind of stored container or uh, and burying it in a cool place in the ground. It's not until about 5500 BC, about a thousand years after humans first started collecting and storing milk, that there is evidence that the adults in these groups were becoming lactose tolerant, meaning that they were able to uh, consume and digest lactase, the sugar found in milk, beyond their infancy. This is a groundbreaking moment in the history of cheese making because it means that milk has become a really, really important part of the human diet, not only in its process form, but also in its liquid form. About 65% of the world today is still lactose intolerant, which means that lactose tolerance appears to have developed specifically in the people groups that were cultivating, storing and processing milk. While they started out as lactose intolerant, it's possible that the continual exposure to very small amounts of lactose in the soft, fresh cheeses they were making from the milk led to the eventual development of lactose tolerance, enabling them to also drink the milk that they were collecting from their animals. 
Ultimately, we don't really know for sure how human beings first discovered how to turn milk into cheese, but it's entirely likely that they figured it out by accident. As soon as they started collecting milk and storing it in jars, it was only really a matter of time before one of those jars got left just a little bit too long, and by the time anyone got round to checking on it, it had turned into a solid mass of curds. Someone was brave enough to taste it, and thus began the world's obsession with cheese. Once humans discovered cheese, it started appearing everywhere in the ancient Near East. In the next video in this series, I'm going to look at the next step in the evolution of cheese, what it looked like among the ancient civilizations of the Fertile Crescent. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time for more cheese history.